This video will show how to set up a WAGO Bluetooth wireless radio. We'll start by looking at the master node. We have a power supply here and a 75080 PLC connected with Ethernet. With two I.O. modules, we have a 4-channel digital in, a 4-channel digital out, and the Bluetooth module 750-644 connected with an SMA connection to an antenna. The IP address for the master node is 192.168.1.3. On the remote node, similarly, we have a 750-881 with a two-channel digital out module and the Bluetooth module connected with the antenna. The remote node's IP address is 192.168.1.4. We're going to start by going into the IOCheck software, and we're going to look at the 880, which is the master node. I'm going to click Identify select the module for the Bluetooth and we're going to change the Bluetooth module uh, to be the master and change the name to be the master as well. I'm just going to resize this, the window here and start another instance of IOCheck 3 and this time we're going to connect to the uh, 75081 which is the remote node and again we're going to click identify, click the Bluetooth module, go into the settings, and this time we're going to name the module node 1, and click right. Now click on the PI mapping and adjust slot 1 to be 12 bytes, and click right. And then go back into the settings on the master and here we want to adjust slot 1 to be also 12 bytes and we can adjust uh, other slots we can have up to seven remote nodes in this example we're just going to do the one node but this radio is a point to multipoint design and um, you basically just adjust the number of bytes that you want to transmit to each node uh, using this configuration tool now we're going to pair up the master with the remote so if you go to the net forming and do a search for WAGO 750 devices, you will see the node 1 that we just uh, named. Move that over to the real-time devices and select yes from the drop-down for bind and click right. And we're going to do uh, similarly that for the remote node under net forming. Only this time we're going to see the master show up and we want to uh, add that to the real-time devices and select yes from the drop-down and click right and then we want to click flash which flashes that to the firmware and the device. Then we want to go into the communication real-time mode for both the master and the remote and there's actually online diagnostics for this. So as you can see for slot 1 we have uh, connection completed here and the signal strength is good so this is an easy way to make sure that the previous steps have been completed properly. Now we're going to work on the actual application. We're going to go into Codasys and program the master first, which is again the 75880. Uh, enable web visualizations. And we're going to program this example in ladder diagram. We'll start by uh, going into our PLC configuration and adding the modules that we looked at earlier. We have a four channel digital in, four channel digital out, and then the Bluetooth module and you want to make sure you select the 48 bytes uh, which is the default um, data packet size for the Bluetooth module and you can see the address there for the Bluetooth module is at IB0 and QB0 that's important when we're creating our data array for the uh, communications so here are my input and output data array of size 48 bytes and I'm going to create a, a variable called node 1 seconds we're going to bring a clock back from the remote node into the master to monitor it and we're going to bring this in at IB4 that's one of the elements, the fifth element in the input data array and I'm also going to add a uh, remote DO on and that's uh, just an internal variable I'm going to use in my program and that's going to actually be transmitted out the digital out to the remote node to turn and uh, the first digital output on. So in my ladder I'm just going to create two rungs here. Um, one is tying the uh, internal remote DO on into the uh, first ray element in byte 4. 
And um, we're also going to do a remote reset, which is going to reset that clock in the remote node uh, back to zero so we can kind of gauge how quickly our communications is happening. Uh, so again, we're just going to put that into the um, second element of that um, output data byte four. To facilitate our testing, I'm just going to create a visualization here, uh, PLC Visu. Uh, some of this is uh, somewhat advanced. Uh, I have some other videos that you can look at if you're unfamiliar with setting up visualizations here. Um, just creating a couple objects, tagging them to the variables I have in my uh, global variable list. So this will be the um, digital output control. And here we're going to put in the um, node one seconds that we're going to be monitoring. Just hitting F2 here to bring up the list, the pick list. Let's change the colors a little bit. All right. Documentation. I'm just going to cut and paste this now. Uh, that's my digital output control. Uh, this new uh, tag will be for the uh, reset function. I tag that to the remote reset variable. Okay, so now we have a little interface to control our remote node. I'm going to create a new project for the A81, which is the remote node. Again, we're going to do this in ladder. Start by setting up the PLC configuration. We have a two-channel digital output and the 48-byte Bluetooth module. Again, IB0, QB0 for our in and out on the Bluetooth module. And I've cut and pasted um, some variables um, from a project I already, already created. You can take a look at that if you want to freeze frame, but it's very similar to the master node. Just have a, um, some variables tied to the Bluetooth address as well as the uh, DO for the first channel to turn a light on. And we're just going to tag the data coming in uh, on that same bit in uh, the byte coming in from the Bluetooth module from the master. And then we're going to do the reset uh, byte that's coming in and we're going to tag that to the second, um, which is, I guess, the uh, clock reset. Uh, we need to generate the clock. I'm just going to create a simple uh, timer on with a counter up to generate my clock signal. You know, we have a real-time clock that we could tie into, but for this example, I'm just looking for something to be uh, transmitted back to the uh, master. Again, if you're unfamiliar with the uh, timer on or CTU, I uh, have some tutorials on my uh, uh, YouTube channel that kind of demonstrate how to do this. Create a new rung here, and um, we need to convert the C1 count, which is going to be counting up to 60, but it's a word. We need to convert that to byte, which is how the Bluetooth module is uh, set up. Just a quick test here in the simulation mode. We can see that it is indexing the counter. And now we just need to go offline and add another rung and tie in our, uh, our master reset for the clock. And that will put the uh, count one back to zero. OK, we're going to download that to the remote PLC now. Go back to the 880 and download that to the master. And you can see we are getting data from our um, clock already. We can go into the monitor mode on IOCheck 3 for our remote and just verify that our output actually is turning on. And it is. And you can see that the remote reset does reset the uh, seconds on the clock back to zero. And we can verify that again by going online with the remote node monitoring the uh, C1 count tag. And you can see it's at 30, 26, 36, and now it's back at zero. 
All right, so now that we've tested on the bench, uh, it's time to do a field test. In this example, we're just going to go 100 meters outdoor. Uh, we are rated to one kilometer. Um, so you can see here our master node, and there in the distance is the remote node. And this is less than ideal conditions. You really want your antennas to be uh, mounted properly. Um, but this does show that we are able to control the remote node um, at a distance of 100 meters. And then going back into diagnostics on the master, um, we can see and monitor what our signal strength is. And this is really important when you're doing field work to be able to uh, troubleshoot um, communication issues, because if it's not communicating, you need to know why. And this concludes the Bluetooth demonstration. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.